the uh, October 17th <coughs> meeting of the Conservation and Forestry Committee of Acton. And uh, we're all here today except for Carl and Mark Hurd. Carl has had some family business that was um, needed attention today. Um, Everybody's got a copy of the agenda from October 17th. Anyone? Do you want? Yes. I will work on that one. What do you got to get in there? You got that? Yeah, I got it. And who would need uh, meeting minutes from the 19th? Anyone? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. The fellows need uh, meeting minutes from the 19th of September. They were in that box. And uh, just a protocol here, unless you get a phone call from either Whitney or myself, the, we're going to try to make the uh, pertinent paperwork in, in, the in the file by Tuesday morning at the very latest. No, oh, okay, because I, you know, <coughs> had stopped looking in there years ago because I never got anything in there. Sure. Would you folks need a couple of minutes or a Yeah, we might as well take them back to the water finance. Maybe if you don't want to hand over that, then I can fix it. Any minutes from September? Sure. Agenda for the time. Okay. Anything else you'd like to do? Um, you know, I'm going to save copies for Carl and Frank. Okay, Mark. thanks. Um, it's just to approve the minutes quickly from September 19th. Okay. Everyone had a chance to look those over. Just say aye and we'll put the vote on those. All right.
tanks and nothing like this. Ari Hilo Hilo Road. Um, there was an indication of support to proceed with uh, a legal inquiry regarding the question of public access to the Hilo Hilo Road. And um, we did get some material back today uh, at the select board meeting, and we haven't had time to digest that. And we'll probably go into a fuller discussion when we uh, have had a time to uh, uh, understand what the lawyer is uh, telling us on that. Um, we did uh, speak to the issue at the, uh, um, was that, the October 11th, um, excuse me, October 10th select board meeting. And uh, it was characterized as uh, regarding the question of public access to the Hebo Hilo Road, characterized as passive, non-motorized recreation uses, for example, hiking, biking, and cross-country skiing. Uh, I spoke to the issue on behalf of the Conservation Forestry Committee and mentioned that funds were available from Three Rivers to help assist with the legal expenses of the legal inquiry. The questions that we asked Joe Linkowski were, um, first of all, uh, does any acting resident have the right to access the town forest lot on the Hebrew Highway Road in the conduct of passive non-motorized recreation uses? Second, uh, and this was with the, uh, the first question was, it had the common law um, knowledge, I guess it was, or, or sense that an acting resident would have um, the right to access a public property that laid interior to the uh, beginning of the road. The second question was, do members of the general public have the same right to access, and if not, could this be granted by a town meeting vote? And third, what measures need to be taken jointly by Acton <coughs> and Lebanon to secure a legal right of passage for passive recreational uses on the Hilo Road originating from Acton or Lebanon. Maybe. Um, so that's what last Friday, with Jennifer Rue's help, we sent off those questions to Joe Lankowski. Um, and as I say, we got back answers today, but we haven't had a chance to read them. <coughs> Um, uh, item 4D under agenda item was a proposal by Steve Watkin uh, at tonight's meeting to speak to the development of a management plan which we had endorsed at our previous meeting for him to proceed with that and I'll let him uh, tell you about that. Well, there certainly hadn't been anything in the way of a, a vote. It was more of a, what was the, what was the phrase you used, Tom? Um, uh, that there was, uh, <laughs> there was a, a indicated support. In principle or something yeah. like that, principle of indicated support. Um, and in fact, yeah, I think we received that. The question had more to do with the procedure of the selectmen and how they would handle, you know, any monies that would be needed or, or we mentioned about the, um, cost of putting together a forest management plan and the timetable that that might take versus when any harvest would create income uh, to pay that fee. And basically I just forwarded the idea that, uh, you know, I would be willing to wait, you know, to do any of those, um, you know, the billing. And then the question just had to do with if it exceeded a certain length of time or if in fact for some reason the town elected not to do any work since in fact it is a a town property without putting the cart before the horse until you know what's happening and what you know you have out there on the property. I didn't put forth an idea that we were going to be doing any work out there until until the plan's done. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to go back in and just kind of look at the idea behind what their uh, limits were for spending should a vote to not proceed with any commercial work to create those incomes and harvest uh, plan reimbursement um, whether they could handle that. So it seemed that in principle the idea was to move forward and that they were going to look at the, uh, the process of if this then that. Uh, 
and pay for services for the plane. Yes. And the, the, uh, they were going to make a return to uh, the city of Tucker, not to Tucker, but to uh, the shell owner, the town treasurer, as to where those funds might come from. Right. And then the, the and, and this is something that I didn't ask, but in fact they did uh, put it forth out there that if it was less than three thousand dollars, it wasn't anything that would require a bid to be done or something like that as well. So it seems the process is there, and the question would be is uh, you know can they should they or how would they uh, allocate it? Should the harvest not create those funds? Um, any questions for Stephen on that one? Um, new business, Bill. If, if you uh, gleaned anything that we might be able to use in this committee from all your own, would you share that with us? Um, it was kind of hard because I didn't take notes or anything. I just, uh, it's a, we, we trust you. You remember. Trust my hands. I trust you. I mean, basically, he just told us what he had been. Doing and show us the uh, where the the, the the public properties are. Maybe we should explain who Owen is. Oh, okay. Uh, he's the head of the conservation committee in Wells, and um, over the years they've accumulated quite a bit. They they seem to have um, managed a trick that not too many conservation committees get, which is that they get given quite a bit of money. I mean, one, I don't know how much it gets now. At one point, they're getting seventy thousand bucks a year to uh, to put aside for to buy land, you know, because of the price of land in Wells. What, what I was hoping you could delve into, if it was apparent, was how he accomplished that. <laughs> what was it in his manner or, or technique that enabled him to win the trust of the people that he was working with? Well, actually, the. Um, that was what makes it difficult to like talk about the, the, the whole thrust of his talk was don't piss anybody off. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a good rule of thumb. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> that should be our motto. Uh, you know, where it's, it gets usually pretty antagonistic between yeah. um, conservation committees and, right. and um, so that um, like one of the things like one of the One of the town councils or whatever they have. Yeah, I'm not sure whether they have. Did they have selectmen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, land right on um, Rachel Carson. And he was kind of incensed that, I mean, I, I can understand this a bit that the, you're not even allowed to cross country ski there in the window. Uh, which I, you know, somebody should explain to me at some point because I racked my brains and I cannot come up with a good um, rationale for that. But, um, I mean, if you can walk there, why can't you ski there? Okay, anyway, he was annoyed with that. So Owen told him, well, that if they bought this, it would be town owned and he could go and, and ski on it anytime. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and basically a lot of stuff like that where um, you have the usual antagonism towards um, government-owned property, too many rules, and whatever, and his, his way it was just worse way than it belonged to the town, and they could do pretty much anything they wanted on Pretty much enabling the town to conserve itself. Mm -hmm. So does Wells have anything with regard to the um, mitigation when the lot is bought or divided or built on? I mean, is there any built-in funding mechanisms that go toward the Conservation Commission? Like, if he's raising money, that would just be the don't piss anyone off and go ask for a lot of money method. Mm -hmm. But does Wells, did, did you gather anything that they have a mechanism by which they routinely come by this money each year? Well, they get somebody that, oh, well, the money is just like town meeting. They vote on how much money they get just like we do. Okay, so it's out of the budget. It's out of the yeah. budget, okay. but also some of the land that they've gotten 
over the years, one guy just gave them some, then he gave them some more, mm -hmm. and then does he, I assume that he had, you know, there was some sort of tax benefit he was doing. Do they conduct harvesting on any of the land? Uh, yeah. Um, well, what they, for instance, one of them is dedicated to um, bringing back New England as opposed to Eastern cottontail rabbits. Right. So they, um, they cut that in order to try and get it back to the kind of shrubby stuff that the rabbits like. Mm -hmm. So they do, they do do that kind of harvesting. <clears throat> Do you have anything to add? I don't think he mentioned any specific mechanism that the town has for it. I know some towns have like a land use personnel. Yeah. And, and they, they raise money and there's a couple of mechanisms where, they, where some money to the town go into land purchasing. Um, he has legal mechanisms. An example of that. We didn't go into any of those mechanisms uh, other than grants. But um, like Bill said, his, his basic is uh, Town-owned properties have a, a multiple use, uh, mm -hmm. and, and he wasn't against certain uses that might offend some people, such as motorized vehicles. Um, I personally be sensitive to that on the wetland that's in this parcel of Hugh Hubbard. But uh, basically, he was pretty amenable to leaving things open for multiple, mm -hmm. multiple usage, and, and he did. He did stress the educational factors of, of specific properties. You know, he really tied it to the opportunity for kids to learn something in the natural setting. Has he, has he had luck with that, integrating it with, with uh, high school or junior high? I, I think he specified that they used it, whether he could find grant monies to go against that. You know, yeah. you know, I'm not sure. But, but I, I think that's a general property at town would will if you find ways to make sure. properties appeal to young people, yeah. particularly teaching. And, um, you know, I, I'm sure he mentioned all sorts of things like some sensitive habitats that would be useful for teaching specific concepts. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, ever hear him speak before? No, nope. yes, I have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you guys for attending. Mm -hmm. Um, any other business the board would wish to discuss this evening? Um, Lois and Roland, do, do, do you want to uh, talk to us a little bit tonight? No, we're happy as think, think our, finance can be, I guess. I think <laughs> our, our uh, um, issues jointly are to iron out the legal questions that surround this access issue and, and it's a, from our desk anyway it's a work in progress we, we just as we mentioned we just received some word back from Joel Lankowski and I haven't had a chance to digest it nor even share it with the other board members so we'll, we'll be discussing that with uh, hopefully some input from um, Jen Rule and the lawyer in the interim and we'll, we'll be a little more clear on what his actual stand is, and we'll be more than happy to share that with you. I think we we both, um, and I'm speaking to you as the representative of Maple Grove Center. Okay, I'll switch hats. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I said, okay, I'll switch hats. Um, we both have concerns about the way the road has been abused and Definitely. companies on either side of the uh, way there, and. Uh, it would be beneficial to the town if we sorted that out, I think, and remained on speaking terms at this time. I'm not that hard to get along with. Okay. Um, <laughs> we got room. Well, I saw a so, raised there. So it's a, a work in progress with the emphasis on progress, hopefully. Well, the problem is, is that we go, the cemetery association and the cemetery itself goes back 175 years. So we we've been around for quite a while, and they just they just turned 175 this year. So I come from a long aspect of members and associations, and the way to become a member is unfortunately you have to have somebody buried there that's family. Or and I go back quite a ways. And we go back just just about 
before it was sharply acting and back in the new field. But that's how it accumulates. I mean, I've been on the board itself for the last 10, probably 15 years, if not longer, just as a president. I go back as a trustee even farther. So this, is, this has been a hard road. At first, when the Higo Hago started, it was fine. We didn't have as much issue. People were traveling, being decent. Now it's got ATVs. It's got people throwing up stuff at us constantly. We had more damages there than we know what to do. We got a gentleman that lives way out back. I talked. We've talked to him several times about not plowing in the cemetery because we have an emergency, and unfortunately, he plows us in. And we've talked to him about that before. I mean, it's just some stuff that back. 10, 15 years ago, it was just the, just everyday us. Now it's not just everyday us. It's progressing, and we have and because they're closing down more trails. People take over the Hebrew High the way that they shouldn't be taking it. And it's unfortunate because I, I I think it would make a great a great access for people that want to hike or people that want to check out things. I know there's certain areas out there if you go out and hike it just right and go over the certain properties. You could actually see the ocean. Wow. You'd be surprised what's out there. I don't say that too much because I want taxes to go up, but <laughs> anyway, you'd be surprised what's out there. It's just the damages that are being done that's what's killing us. We, we just can't do it. Well, uh, I think I should speak to the committee in, in the hopes that with, with more concern being shown on that as an example of our um, roads that have been discontinued and yet maintained on public access. Um, I think we can improve those kinds of situations rather than just letting them boil over. So, uh, I think we'll and I'm sure we appreciate that. It's just at the point where it's getting ready to boil over because we, like I said, we've been talking about putting up barricade fence and stuff like that to stop some of the damages that are being done. Okay. Lois, have you, have you folks received um, recent um, information that you asked for clarity from a lawyer on? Um, no, we get the same. I, get, I waited the same as you. I'm going to be seeing the same thing, see if we can see clarity. I'm going to talk to some of the trustees next couple of days to see what they want to do. To, to uh, make this as efficient and painless as possible, can you kind of work through Jen Rule? And her being a, a, uh, a source of information for both of us in terms of whose who's lawyer is whose. And I can uh, see what the trustees want to do. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I use we use Joe also. So. Well, that's, that's a good thing. Isn't it? <laughs> you know, it all depends how we're going to look at this. <laughs> we only turn one meter instead of two. Different right, lawyers. and then, then we also have another. We also have another lawyer that's the, that we also use. We use a couple. Of it's not just, you know, one lawyer's opinion we can come we, Just so you know, we sent him off, uh, again with Jennifer's help, um, quite a file of records dating back to 1936, I think it was, where yeah. I, had, I had done some research a year ago in preparation for this, and uh, found four or five citations, and we sent all that stuff off to Joe on the last Friday. Um, I've just, I've just been waiting like you guys have to see what they have to say and then we're going to take it from there. Like I said, our biggest problem is damages. We're, yeah. we're, we can't absorb the damages all the time. You know, we got to do something. Well, I think we can work together and make this a uh, good solution for all concerned, I hope. Um, any, any other comments or business to come before us today? You can almost break the bridge again. That is why it was so quiet down in there, is that you couldn't go all the way through. There was a bridge across the street that was impassable, and then somebody fixed it. There's two homemade bridges out there that are made by the gentleman who owns the property. Mm -hmm. they, he made them himself so he could access his property on both sides. They're homemade bridges. You you take your chances. You do. It, it's just what it is. It's a homemade bridge. <coughs> So but I just mean that it was impassable for a long time. It was. It and was. so nobody went through there. No. We've uh, got. So you were logging and you fixed the bridge up yourself, which was, of course, always temporary. Mm -hmm. 
They well, get what, somebody. In to the cemetery, what did you have with the damages? You're talking about being plowed in. Is well, it, we're talking about it, stones being thrown at our, at our, at our headstones. Gotcha. I mean, they're just taking, you know, whipping out through the air. And unfortunately, the ACVs, you know, big trucks, whatever they want to do, that, that damages the stones. Right. So we it's actually, not just in the road bed itself. It's actually. Oh, yeah. It's affecting the inside the cemetery. And not only that, going down the side of the road, we used to have grass on the outside, believe it or not, grass and bed of trees where that red, where that red maple is. Used to be a whole length of grass and everything else. They've taken and, and torn all that up through. I mean, it's just unfortunately, we've had to put up gates recently because we've had people, instead of going through there, they go through the cemetery part to, because it gets wet in that area. You know, it's just craziness. And then we had somebody actually t damage one of the gates a couple of years ago. Because instead of making a phone call, they decided to take it upon themselves and break a law. So, I mean, we've had, we've had three officers out there. We've had the game ones out there. Their suggestion was is to close it down. They don't want anything back. They, they're tired of chasing they want to know what the town intends to do. And I told them, I said, I don't know. Because I know state law says you can't landlock people. But I also understand that you, you in front controls access. In other words, my understanding is, is that I share my front with the neighbors across the way. We decide actually how you access it, whether it be foot, by, by foot, by trade, by skiing, you know, whatever it is. That's my understanding. Well, again, though, I don't. I don't know that that's necessarily true. That's what no, the paperwork. No, that's that's what I said. That's my understanding. Yeah. But that, that's what I'm saying. It's just so much. Years ago, this has never been an issue. It would never have been a thought. Town has property back there. Nobody would have thought nothing about them accessing it the way they will apparently would like to. But because of everything that's going on, especially with the ATVs and the, and the, and the way they're damaging so much. We just can't take the damages anymore. I mean, we've got people, got people that want to sue the cemetery association for damages. You know, yeah. and what are we supposed to do? Individual lot owners? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they've had stones that are being damaged by this. And unfortunately, that's why I've called in, I've called in more York County officers than I want to. Because they've told us, of the 23 years some of them have been there, this is as much as they've ever been called in. Unfortunately, we have to report damages. Whether they're good, bad, or injunct, we have to report them. And I had one of the forest rangers who actually came out and he talked to me for a long time. He wanted to know what the town intended to do because they were tired of chasing. You know, you have unregistered vehicles running through there. You have not just one, you have hundreds sometimes because we actually we, we watched a bunch go down through one time. They went from one road right up to the other. And, that's where they were headed. Well, you know, I think listening to you and, and having some past experience of what's going on out there, we, we're going to need all the uh, uh, experience in, in how communities have dealt with these things. We're not certainly the first to have these situations. And, um, we'll, we'll have to come up with some answers. That are respective of the abiding landowners and yet permit sensible uses. Um, I have uh, I don't have anything else more on the agenda. But we do have anything that needed uh, discussing. Okay. Um, I'm all set. I'm all set. Motion to adjourn. Oh, I need a second. Okay. Thank you. Our next meeting is when? Wait, you know? <laughs> 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 Thank you. If it's still warm, why not?